Curry Cup is the oldest and most prestigious domestic rugby competition in the world and the cornerstone of South African rugby since 1891. A hundred years after Sir Donald Curry donated the very first trophy to Griquas, we would experience one of the most thrilling roller coaster rides of a season in the competition's history. This is the story behind the 1991 Curry Cup season. For you to understand the craziness that was this 1991 season, we have to take a step back into 1990. Northern Transvaal dominated the local rugby scene in one of the most commanding seasons in Curry Cup history. They topped the log and faced Natal in the final, but two weeks before the final, the Blue Bulls easily beat the Banana Boys 28-6 in a final round clash at Loftus. No one gave Natal a chance, but on the day, everything went right for them and wrong for Northerns. It started with centre Peter Nell running onto the field before kickoff and hearing an audible snap in his knee. He wouldn't start the game and Hendrik Kree replaced him before kickoff. Natal famously won their first Curry Cup at Fortress Loftus 100 years after the union was formed. Northern Transvaal captain Nas Boerta was visibly upset and sent a stern warning to the rest of the unions. Northern Transvaal zal volgen en weer in die finale wees. Maar ek twyfel of Natal in die finale gaan wees, want is een ander ding om een kampioen te wees en een kampioen te bly. Natal moet bewys hy is een kampioen die raai beker weer te wen. A one-off. Vergeer het maar. The favourites going into the 1991 Curry Cup season were Natal as defending champions and a young up-and-coming Transvaal side under the coaching guidance of Harry Falloon. Transvaal kicked off the Curry Cup race at a tremendous pace and were unbeaten at the halfway mark of the competition. Twitter nicely in position. And Twitter picks up his own tap. He might go right through. Neil Berg is waiting. And beautifully done by Hendrik Twitter. Wonderful dubbing. But he probeert from a pad out with Fech. Now the ball is going to be held by Gath Wright. And we're going to the other side. Bernard Fouri. Twitter in the other line. Very strong. You're left there. Nick is a pretty good thing. And you can't find the other side. That's the ball in the other side. Van the center. The James Small. The rechter flail. Of Hugo van As. The center. Hugo van As. Northern Transvaal season started dreadfully. After a decent win against Freestad in round 1, they were brought down to earth against Natal at Kings Park in round 2. With Nas Buerta still playing club rugby in Rovigo, the captaincy was given to Uli Schmidt. Natal dominated from the first minute and blew Northerns off the park in an emphatic 54-15 victory. Good catch by Adolf Milan. Well taken on by Jakob Pitsia. Can he get it back? Graham Hefer impeding him. This is Muir. Thompson. Watson getting inside. Van der Valt again. The dirt support once again from Hefer. This is Thompson. He's got Stransky on the outside. Jeremy Thompson in for his second try. It's going to be under the posts. One man doesn't make a team, but Buerta couldn't return to the side soon enough. Schmidt took a lot of blame for the performance and was axed as captain. This was the harsh reality of an expectation of fans and administrators in Pretoria. And I now on my foot for a gevolg. But like me, the history is going to be erased. So what with my pa? Now that he also one time as a captain for a span, he played what he lost from the transfer. Took him out of the scrap. And like me, the same path like me is busy with my team again. The surprise package early in the season were Western Province, who won three of their five games at the halfway mark and were tied with Northern Transvaal after six rounds. 
Paul Bergman in van 3 nummer 86. Freestad also had a poor start to the season, scoring only one victory over Eastern Province in the first half of the season. Although in typical Freestad fashion, they played some very attractive rugby. After six rounds, they were sitting in fifth position on the log. You see Helthard Muller with the tap around, well played by Peter Muller. Can they get it on the outside? Beautiful play by Martins, wonderful play. Andre Jaber running himself into position. In the second half of the season, the wheels came off for Transvaal and they lost three games in a row before beating Natal 25-18 in the last round of the competition. They did enough to top the overall log, but the momentum was already shifting. In contrast to Transvaal's fortunes, Northern Transvaal won their last three matches to finish on 12 points with Western Province and Free State. Pre-season favourites Natal did not feature, as Nasquita predicted a year earlier. So, going into the last round of the Curry Cup, Transvaal topped the log after a solid victory against Natal at Ellis Park. Western Province was sitting on 12 points tied with Northern Transvaal and all they had to do was draw with a 5th place free state in Bloemfontein to kick Northerns out of the title race. What happened in the last quarter of this match is the type of scenario you will only see in a Hollywood movie. In the 25th minute of the second half, Western Province fly-off Lance Sherrill kicked a good penalty to put Western Province uh, level with free state at 18 all. The momentum was on Province's side and Free State fullback Andre Bad had a shocker with a boot and missed two easy penalties. This was going to be Western Province's day. Surely the writing was on the wall. Then, six minutes from time, Western Province attacked from a line out just inside their own half. The ball went to Western Province lock FC Smith, who ran down the blind side, and with support on his outside, a try was imminent when out of nowhere Smith got tackled by notorious streaker Brian Barnoff. Barnoff, wearing only his socks, put in a perfect tackle on Smith which stopped a possible try. That wasn't the end of the drama though. Two minutes before the final whistle, Western Province got a penalty a couple of meters inside their own half. Cheryl took it upon himself to go for goal, which made sense. If it goes over, Western Province wins and they are in the final. If he misses and the ball goes dead, they draw and Western Province still goes through to the final. Instead, in the freakiest bad luck ever, Cheryl hits the upright with his kick and the ball stays in play. Freestead runs with the ball and gets a penalty. They tap, run and get another penalty. On the charge, FC Smith holds him up. In goes Pete Besta. Will Martins get it again? Five. Penalty again. Now Free State have to run the ball, but it's an awful situation. That's the 22 just behind Hendy Martins. They run on the short side as Brendan Finter gets it out there to Andre Fruta. Martins, lovely little hand in there. Brendan Finter now. With little option but to kick, Free State fly off Yanni de Beer kicks the ball downfield, only for Western Province fullback Hans Skriba to drop a sitter. The ball gets kicked through by Freestate and wing Isak Benneke scores under the post. Hubert converts to give Freestate a 24-18 victory, thus forcing a three-way tie between Northern Transvaal, Western Province and Freestate, all on 12 points. So in the space of two minutes, Western Province went from second on the log to fourth on the log and Freestate was suddenly in second spot. Two playoff games had to be played to determine who would play against Transvaal in the final. In the first playoff game, Northern Transvaal took on Western Province at Loftus and totally dominated with Uli Schmidt in inspirational form. Northerns were on fire and set up an encounter with Freestead in Bloemfontein a couple of days later. With Boerta having a rare off day, the kicking was entrusted to Gerbrand Grubler who kicked 7 out of 7 to beat Freestead 27-23 in their own backyard. Northern Transvaal achieved the impossible. They had no right to be in the final, but now they were hosting Transvaal at Loftus Versveld as the previous final between the two sides took place at Ellis Park in 1987. Northern Transvaal showed true grit and tremendous application to work their way back into the cup final.
The final at Loftus was a sellout and rugby fever was running high north and south of the XK River. Northern Transvaal had to play three games in eight days to reach the final, while Transvaal had a week off to rest. Northern's coach Eugene van Weyck was positive that this would not negatively affect his side. Ons laatste oefening is die kampeins aan en dit is maar basis wat ons mee bezig is om te doen wat ons net bykie raak raak bespeel. Ons het baie goeie oefening gehad, ons het so, goeie, so goed soos drie vaste oefeningen gehad in die sin dat ons drie wedstrijden in acht dagen gespeel het. En uh, ek dink ons is baie goed voorbereid. The final wasn't it without tragedy though. Northern Transvaal prop Jan Lok played in a warm-up game before the final and collapsed in the change room after the game before sadly passing away. He will be remembered as one of the best tight-head props in South Africa during the 1980s. For the last time in a remarkable season, these two sides took to the field to determine who the best team in South Africa was. The game gets into top gear, each side opening up whenever an opportunity presents itself. It's a tightly contested first 40 minutes and half-time sees Captain Boerta giving his team the right act for not playing to their full potential. The talk pays dividends as wave upon wave of blue jerseys breaks upon the Transvaal defences. First, Yannick Larsen intercepts a chip kick to run through unopposed to score underneath the post. It's, it's uh, Yannick Larsen and Yannick Larsen is going to score here. Yannick Larsen with the interception. Then wing Dion Westhuizen collects a favourable bounce from a Buerta kick to race away again to touch down under the post. En dan verloor hij dat een Westhuis en krijgt het onder beheer. En hier komt het reed, maar die thuisstof van die Karibeker voor 1992. Goe alle twijfel kan plaats voor 1991. Boerta rounds off another masterful display of leadership to bring the cherished Curry Cup home to Pretoria and avenge the miserable defeat to Natal 12 months earlier. This was a Hollywood ending for Northern Transvaal. From losing by a record score to Natal, to a streaker tackling a man twice his size, to a ball hitting the upright and free state scoring, and to Transvaal losing form at the end of the season. All the pieces fell into place for Northern Transvaal in one of the craziest and remarkable seasons in Curry Cup history.